My name is Jodie and I lost my husband Craig to suicide in 2013. He was 33 at the time and we had a one-year-old and five-year-old. To say I was blindsided by his death would be an understatement. Um, although I knew he had depression and had been battling it for a long time, I I could never have imagined that he would take his own life. And so when he did, it threw my life into complete and utter disarray. And I think what made that even more challenging was I didn't know anyone else who had gone through that. I didn't know really what resources were available to me or where to even go and look for them. So that's why I think these videos and the resources that we're trying to put together here with other people with lived experience are just so important so that other people who have to go through this do have more support available. The grieving process is very long and very varied, I would say. So even though people talk about the survival period, for me, that wasn't just a few weeks. It, it really was probably a year or longer. And I, I really remember very vividly reading this post by another person with a lived experience on a support group called Alliance of Hope. And they talked about the fact that you, for the first year you're in survival mode, the second year you're thawing, and the third year you start coming back to life. And at the time I thought, no, nah, that's, that's not possible. There's no way I can stay sad that long, but I did. And in a way it was very helpful to know that that was normal, you know, that I didn't feel like something was wrong with me that I was feeling bad. And so in terms of what helped me, I would say in those very initial days and weeks, it was really just staying together, staying alive in many senses. I it was eating, drinking, and keeping myself together and putting one foot in front of the other. And then as the weeks and months passed, the, the real thing that I focused on was self-care. So I had in my mind, I put myself in a position to cope, the better I would cope and the more likely I would come through it. So I really focused on eating well, sleeping well, exercising and doing pretty much anything that I thought would would make me healthier physically and emotionally. That didn't just involve friends and family, it was also counsellors, psychologists, support groups, um, pretty much any form of support that I could get. And then I think the other big thing was writing. So I did, I kept a journal, um, and writing it all down and just getting out all the emotion and all the things that were in my head that I couldn't really say to anyone else or didn't feel I could. Um, so that was very beneficial as well. I was really lucky. I, I did have really close family and friends who stepped up to, to support me. Again, I would say it really varied over the time so, you know, in those initial days, I was a complete and utter wreck and having people to make me food and, and give me water and check on me, I needed that. I needed people to help keep me safe and help me look after the kids in, in that very crisis period. And then afterwards, not so much the practical stuff. Yes, to a degree, but it became more about the emotional support. So having people around me who understood and would listen, and that went beyond family and friends to finding psychologists, counsellors, support groups again. So really a mix between practical, very practical support, and then the emotional support as well. If future me was to step back and talk to me, you know, the night after or the weeks after, the first thing would be you're going to be okay. You're going to come through this and life will be good again. And it's, it's incomprehensible now that that would even be possible, but it is possible. And, and to give me that, that hope and that reason to keep going and fighting.
because I really needed that back then and I went searching for it. I, I tried to find examples of people who were okay because otherwise I couldn't see what the point was. Why would I continue to live with that much pain if I was never going to feel happy again? So, yes, I would step back and I would say, you will get through this, you will be okay. And I would also, I also wish I knew that it did take a long time. You know, you if you lose someone you love, of course, that's not an overnight fix. You don't just get through it in a day or two or weeks or months even, it's there. And, and it's also normal to go back and forth in the emotions that you're feeling that you can get to the point where you almost think I've accepted it and then find yourself back in denial or anger or depression and, and then back towards acceptance again. And that would have been really helpful to, to really fully understand, I think. The big thing I would say to someone who had just lost a loved one to suicide is number one, look after yourself. Like really, really look after yourself. Prioritise your mental and physical health. That will make it much more likely that you will be able to get through this okay. Um, and that means um, exercise, sleep, nutrition, meditation, yoga, writing, whatever it is, but anything that makes you feel better or puts you in a better position mentally um, or physically, you need to prioritise that above anything. Uh, I would also say make sure you're getting support. So take support from other people who are offering it and if people aren't offering the support you need, go ask for it or go find it. You know, re there are groups out there who, who can support people in these circumstances. And yeah, absolutely, even friends and family, sometimes they don't know how to help you. So asking for that cup of tea or for them to look after the kids or for them to put on a load of washing or whatever it is. So asking for support is absolutely critical, I think. And then the last thing I would say is just know that other people have been through this and they have come through the out, out the other side okay. And not just okay, that they are happy again, they're, they're whole again, and that life doesn't come to a halt because of it. Keep looking forward to the future, do what you need to do, and you will be okay again.